All right, welcome back to the Ultimate Mixdown. In this video, we're gonna go through the very common and very frustrating scenario where you just installed a brand new plugin, a new VST or a new component, or you installed a plugin sometime back and you click on effects for your track and boom, it's not there. Well, maybe I mistyped it. So you try a few different names, you search, okay, it was a VST, it's not here. Components, not there. You start going deeper and deeper in the search and you cannot find that plugin. I am here to help you with this problem. I have six ways that we can test and try and make sure that you can find your plugins and make sure that you can use them on your tracks today. So the first thing that you should do in general is verify that you installed the plugin correctly. You should see the user guides or manuals for those plugins to make sure that they're installed correctly. One thing in particular is making sure that if you're installing the plugin yourself, i.e. You're, you're downloading a file for the plugin, like a VST, and you're moving that into a specific folder on your computer, you want to make sure that you put that plugin in the appropriate folder on your Mac or on your PC's hard drive. So I'm going to put some links on the screen just for reference, or I should say paths, where you should be looking to make sure that these plugins have been installed. So for Mac, that's the Mac Library Audio Plugins folder. I can show you that right now since I'm using a Mac. So you go to your hard drive, library, audio, plugins. And then from there, it depends on the type of plugin. It could be a clap plugin, VST, VST3, VST3. If you're using AU plugins or components, that would be under components. Now, once you find and verify that they're here or not, if they're not, you need to go back and reinstall that plugin. Or you need to take the VST or the AU file and put it in the appropriate plugin folder. There should have been some type of documentation that came with the plugin that told you exactly where you need to place the plugin before you can even search for it in your DAW. So once you've verified that you've installed it correctly and it's in the correct location on your hard drive, then what we want to do is make sure that we go into our settings, down to plugins, VST. We want to make sure that we scan or rescan for any new plugins that we've installed. So you might have installed a new plugin, but you might not have clicked rescan. So Reaper knows that that plugin exists on your machine. So you click the rescan button, the very top option, rescan VST paths for new slash modified plugins. Click that. Reaper will go to all the, all the folders, all the locations that you've told it in the past, plus some that it already knows. It will look through all those folders. It will check those VSTs. It will check those components. And it'll see, is there anything that is not already part of our effects in Reaper? And if it sees that, it will pull those into Reaper so long as there's no other issues with those plugins. Okay, so once you click Rescan, you can go back out, go into the effects, and try to add it again. If you still don't see the plugin, not a problem. Then we'll move on to step number three. So for step number three, we need to verify and if necessary, update the paths that Reaper's looking for these plugins and then rescan again. Now the way to edit the path list is this button right here. So we're still under Reaper settings, plugins, VST, and then we click edit path list. Now you want to verify here, and this is going to be different for Mac and PC. So for PC, it's the paths that I had shown on the screen earlier, but for Mac, we're gonna look at the library audio plugins folders, okay? And for VST, it's gonna be VST or VST3, but then there's also the user paths too. I don't have anything in these. Again, you can double check these paths just by a quick Google search. Okay, and to show you how to add a new path list, we can go to edit path list, add path, and then you can search, right? Mac HD, library, audio, plugins, and then you can select the name of the folder that you need Reaper to scan and verify that there's new plugins in. So if my VST3 is missing and I only have the VST showing right now in Reaper, I would add VST3 and click open. I already have the path list that I need for my projects, but go ahead and add the path and then again, rescan, rescan VST paths for new modified plugins. Ideally, this will pull in any plugins from those paths that didn't initially exist because it didn't know to look in those folders to begin with. Now, if that still doesn't work, then we have some issues potentially with the plugins themselves. So I would do a quick Google search on the plugin itself and see, is this even compatible with Reaper? Or is this compatible with my version of Mac HD, the OSX that I'm working in, right? Because over time, if developers don't continue 
to maintain these plugins and make them compatible with newer versions of Reaper, newer versions of whatever DAW you're working in, newer versions with your operating system, that over time, they're not going to be compatible. Even if you could load them, they could eventually be problematic over time. So that's one thing that you definitely want to check. Now, if there's other issues with it, and this is particular to Mac in general, Mac likes to take things that aren't by verified signed developers, or it hasn't been verified specifically by Apple, then they like to essentially jail those plugins in a special security manner where you cannot access them in your DAW without going through some hoops. There's a way that you can do it through the terminal, but I'm going to assume that the majority of the people that are watching this don't want to be writing lines of code in the terminal. But another way to do the exact same thing is to go through the security and privacy settings on your machine. And this is much easier and straightforward, and I'm going to walk you through that now. So step number four, security and privacy. One way to see if your plugins were rejected because of these security concerns, i.e. an unsigned developer, you can search under rescan plugins that failed to scan. If you've done your research, you know that you need that plugin, you know that it's compatible with your DAW and with your system, then to get around the security measure, you'll look for what it is that you need to load. Okay, so let's say this NRR1 plugin that I like by Ignite Amps, and I'll click on this. It will scan it once again, because that's what clicking on it does. And it says, cannot be open because the developer cannot be verified. Apple is cracking down even harder than before on developer verification. Okay, so click cancel here. It might pop up once or twice. And this is what you're going to do. Once you try to scan for that plugin, it gets housed in that special security jail that I mentioned earlier. So from here, we would go to our system settings. Okay, so your Mac system settings. And you can search security and privacy or scroll down to it. And under privacy and security, scroll all the way down or most of the way down and you'll see that plugin is actually listed. So the plugin was blocked from use because it is not from an identified developer. This is where you have the option to open the plugin anyway. And again, be absolutely certain that you wanna do this. This is a good security measure to make sure that you're not installing things on your machine that would cause harm to your system in some kind of way. But if you're absolutely sure, click open anyway, then you have to enter your password and click modify settings. And now it has accepted that you're okay with opening that plugin and it will no longer treat it as a security threat. So we can close out of our security settings, click rescan, plugins that failed to scan, and I'll click that plugin one more time. And then you get one more check. Are you absolutely sure that you wanna open this? Yes, for the thousandth time we wanna use this plugin and then click okay. Once you've done that, you can go into your effects and verify that it's there. If you don't see it, you may need to restart Reaper. So go ahead and restart Reaper and then see if that plugin appears there. Now, if step number four doesn't do it, and usually by, the, by step number four, most people's issues are resolved with these missing plugins. But if that doesn't do it, we're going to rescan our entire folder, our entire library of plugins that includes clearing the cache. So to do that, step number five, go to settings. Again, plugins VST under rescan. Clear cache and rescan VST paths for all plugins. Keep in mind that this will take some time and it's going to look through one by one, scan all your plugins again, and recreate your plugin list during this. Now, this is only if you've tried steps one through four and you still can't figure it out, then I absolutely encourage you to try this and you will most likely need to restart Reaper before you see the plugin in your effects list. So keep that in mind. Now, if you've gotten through steps one through five, then step number six is essentially, even if you installed the plugin correctly, there is something going on, some connection wasn't made, or maybe one of the steps in the uh, installation process didn't fully go through. Maybe your system restarted as you were installing the plugin, or maybe you needed to restart the system and you haven't yet. So step number six, reinstall the plugin and then restart your system, restart your computer and try one last time. Okay, so in many cases, it might just ease, it might just be the restarting of the machine that needs to happen, or something happened with the installation. You're going to reinstall it, double check that it's in the folders that you need it to be in, double check your path list here, and make sure that that's the same folder that the plugin is in, and rescan. And if you still don't see it, restart your machine, come back into Reaper, try one last time in the effects, double click, search for that plugin, and more likely than not, you will see it there. So these are the six ways that I know of that you can find missing plugins from your Reaper DAW, but most DAWs that I've worked with, Ableton, Pro Tools, they all have very similar setups, very similar ways to map the plugins to the DAW. All right, hopefully this video helped you out. Please let me know in the comments below. Also, for anybody else that's run into any types of these issues, 
please also comment down below any other methods that you've tried to try and get your plugins to show up in your DAW, specifically methods that you've tried that have ended up being successful so that I can pin that comment to the top for others to read as well. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you're subscribed. If this did help you out, hit the like button. Also, be sure to subscribe for the UMD email list. I'll leave a link in the description below. You'll get my free seven steps to a pro level mix PDF, but you'll also be on an exclusive email list where we send regular updates for new videos, some insider sneak peeks, some other freebies and stuff like that. So definitely sign up so you don't miss out. As always, thank you for joining the Ultimate Mix Sound and I'll see you in the next video.